Welcome back. So after the introduction last lesson, now we are going to actually start doing the repository and DB setup right here, the new task to kind of get data access in our system now from the infrastructure layer. So let's just start up by just starting the task. That's a good start. There we go. Now we have that available. And let's jump back to this framework that I talked about last lesson that can test or mock our entity framework core that we're going to use in order to communicate with our database. As I scroll down, I can see there's support right here for Entity Framework 5, which is the one I'm going to use. And there will be a 6 soon, so maybe when you see these videos, they actually move to 6 or 7 or 8. Go and check out if there's a new setup for that. It seems it's maintained right now at least because this is Preview 2 Plus, so at least they're keeping it maintained, this project right here. But let's go and get it into our solution, this Entity Framework testing mark right, right here. That's the one we're going to use. I'll jump into Writer and I already set up, now you can go and check the previous videos, I already set up a new test project right here with XUnit. Again, it's under Onion Infrastructure Test, under Onion Infrastructure right here, so that's the same project. And then I made one called InnoTech Legos for Live Data Access Test, which is kind of the reference to this guy right here. So that's where our test code is going to kind of build the production code right here. And I already added a couple of test classes as well. This is the first test class right here where we're going to just start by creating a single product type right here with our DB context and then later we'll start doing some more tests in here. But let's just get started. I need to manage NuGet packages again because as you notice I need this new package called NT Framework Core Testing Mark. That was the one we just looked at. Let's just install that to our new project right here. And again the reason I want to do this is because as I said earlier I don't want to have to do integration testing right here. I wanted to use in-memory testing to get as close to just having data running as a unit instead of having data running against a certain database. But I also want to have the opportunity to kind of do a bit of relational work still. So it's kind of a mix of two worlds. So let's see how far we get. I've not used this framework that much. So maybe we'll get at a stop point at some point, but let's try and see how far we can get. So now that we have the NT framework testing mark ready, let's try and use it. And let's jump back to the documentation right here of his page. And as I scroll down, you'll notice that there are a few requirements right here. Um, we need to do virtual DB sets. We'll get back to that later. But here's actually how we can create a marked DB context. And that's where I want to start. So let's jump into the first fact right here that says um, in the DB context that says DB context with DB context options is available just to kind of even get started right here. And I'll just paste in that line to get the marked DB context. Now we don't have a context yet. So we have to create that first. And I'm going to call my context for the main DB context. Later I'll also get one to kind of have security, a database that stores security. So for now let's just keep this as the main DB context. I'll create this type main DB context and get a simple class right here just called main DB context. And for now we'll just keep it here and then we'll move it later on just like we're doing with normal refactoring. Notice there's a small problem right here. I can still not compile my code because it says must be convertible to DB context in order to use parameter. So it seems that I need to do something here. And what I need to do is actually call this the DB context to kind of explain that's the type of this context. And this is how you inherit. If you go and read about DB context and the NC framework, you always need to make your own context in the beginning in order to even start using the DB context. So that was step one. And now we actually have a running unit test. And um, the next step I want to do is just to make sure that it's even available. I'll just do a not null right here. So I'll make an assert uh, null, not null, and I'll pass in that mark DB context. And there we go. Let's try and actually run this unit test now and see if we are already done with our first unit test right here. And again, remember, this is kind of testing the framework or the thing that he built right here as well. So I need to understand what should happen in order to get this running. And notice it's, there's something wrong right here. It says right away that you need a constructor in order to actually run this code. Okay, so it seems that his unit test kind of forces me or his mock framework forces me into getting a constructor in here. I need that anyway, so I'll just add the constructor. It gives, it makes perfect sense that I have a constructor. Let's just keep that for now and see what happens. We rerun the unit test and see if that solved our issue. Uh, there we go. We have a constructor now in our main DB context. And again, notice again, when we work like this with unit testing, we have the classes pretty close, so it's, it's very easy to kind of keep track of what we're actually doing. We still fail, and if I read again, it says the constructor has another problem because it should actually send in one of these instance types, and one of them is actually that we send in something called db context options, and that's why I said it needs to have 
DB context options right here. So let's go back to our constructor and there's actually something in DB context called DB context options. And there I can send in that I'm going to use the main DB context and let's just call it options right here. There we go. Now we have this one available as well. So let's try and rerun the code once more and see if we're happy now. We still fail because there's still no database provider. And that's one final thing that you need to do. And again, if you go and read the documentation on how you use the DB context, you would actually see right away that they encourage you to send this in the constructor and pass it to the superclass right away using base. So now let's see if we're still if we're running now with this simple setup right here to get started. We're green. First unit test completed. And again, notice a few things already happened right there. I was forced into creating this main DB context like this, and I already got a few exceptions. And again, it's very easy for me, instead of making a full functioning system right away, it was very easy for me to see the small errors that just popped up slowly as I move forward. So now with this running, let's just end it right here. Next lesson, we'll try and refactor and get the main DB context up where it belongs. See you next time. Bye.